Hey everyone, Once Bitten here. So I'm making a, a little bit different kind of video today. I'm calling this a taxonomy of Warhammer gamers. Really what this represents is kind of the way that uh, that I think about uh, the gaming community based on you know my limited experience uh, in it. Um, I can tell you that I've played in a minimum with a minimum of three gaming groups in three parts of the country and even then because I play in a variety of places I, I've played with just uh, several more so I based on my experiences with a variety of gaming groups I've just noticed there's there are different ways of thinking about the game and approaching the game and um, and certain cultures evolve within each gaming group based on that and I find it interesting when I see two different gaming groups uh, come together and some of the effects that those cultures have on each other so uh, I thought I'd put the thoughts out there and very interested in any feedback you have on it so where I'm starting with this is I, I I think there are several reasons why people play the game and there are probably reasons beyond this but it, uh, in my opinion these tend to be the, the top six reasons and I'm going to go over these in more detail but as an overview uh, I think some people play Warhammer Fantasy because they enjoy being immersed into the fictional Warhammer world. I believe some people play it because uh, simply for the social aspect of it, for relationships. Some of it uh, get into the hobby and game because they really enjoy the painting and modeling and having a showcase to be able to, sh to, to show what they paint and model. Uh, some people play because it's a strategy game and they enjoy that. Uh, some people play, I'm separating strategy from competition. Uh, I and I'll I'll dis describe more detail in a little bit. But some people I think really enjoy the competition of it, of, of playing on a larger stage and trying to to see how they can uh, rank against other people. And then I think there's a, a a group of people that need to prove to the world that they are winners and probably the most brilliant minds ever to have existed. And we'll talk about those people. So. I think for any of these, it's tough to evaluate yourself. And I think even if you're going to think about a gaming group or someone else, I think it's more fair instead of thinking about the, the term I chose to describe a certain reason why people play Warhammer is maybe to to think about behaviors or ways that you respond to things that, that, that might tell you um, whether or not those are reasons why you play the game. So uh, I would say that if you spend a lot of time going on the online forums and or uh, into the Games Workshop books and reading the background storylines and narratives, uh, what's commonly referred to as fluff. If, you, if you're going to read battle reports online or write your own battle reports, if you're drawn to ones that are narrative, where, they, where it's more characterful and there's storylines and dialogue, um, and or if you like to name your characters and your units, I would say those are probably indications that that you are particularly drawn to this immersion aspect, where you you, you want to feel like for at least a little bit of time you are in that Warhammer world. Uh, reason number two: relationships, and uh, I think anybody who plays who's in gaming at all has has relationships. Uh, but I would ask, you know, if you're if in in terms of this. Uh, I would I would ask myself, you know, do I go out for dinner or for beers or something after gaming with uh, one or more people from the crowd? Uh, have I developed friendships uh, that extend beyond just this one hobby? And uh, do I particularly think about and enjoy the sense of community that I have with this wargaming thing? And if those things are things that uh, are common for you, then, then I would say that you're probably drawn to the hobby uh, because of the relationships. Uh, showcasing. If you spend a lot of time uh, painting and modeling, and I don't mean just the minimum to get it done and get it out the door, but if you really, um, especially bullet two, bullet point number two, if you dedicate the time to, to trying to improve your painting and really make your, your army um, look as, as, as good as you can possibly make it, uh, if you show up at gaming night and you and you uh, pull out a model that you painted that week and start showing it to everybody because you're really proud of it or you just want to share with them uh, how you painted a model, um, and if when you think about playing a game, if it's really is the aesthetics of the game, looking at the battlefield and seeing two nicely painted armies on, on the table, if those are things that are really important to you, then I would say showcasing is, is a, a reason why you play Warhammer. Uh, number four, if you enjoy the strategy of it. Uh, I think a lot of people I know were drawn to the game because of this. But the way I'm defining it here, I would say if you find yourself experimenting with different kinds of lists, um, never being satisfied with one, always bouncing around, trying different ideas. If you insist on building your own lists and not uh, using ones that you find on the internet, 
if you find that even if you lose a game, you're thrilled and glad that you played and just really happy that you played that game because it was tactically engaging, uh, that might show that you enjoy the strategy of the game. And if you win a game, but it just was a blowout, the dice went all one way, the, your opponent was was not very skilled, anything at all. But if you win a game and it was not tactically engaging and you really just didn't enjoy it, uh, that might show that you're you're drawn to it because of strategy. I'm uh, differentiating between strategy and competition because I think there's those are two different groups. I think there's some people that really enjoy the competitive nature of pitting themselves against other Warhammer players on a larger screen, attending especially grand tournaments, going to large events. But if you find that that you play the game because you like to go to tournaments and you you're into it so much that maybe you're organizing tournaments, and I would say that when you play on a weekly basis, do you find that you're really practicing for the next tournament? And, and the majority of your games are for that. Uh, if that's the case, then I would say you're drawn to the hobby because you enjoy the, uh, the the competition aspect of it. Now this last group, and I'll say it again because I just, I just kind of find it funny, you need to prove to the world that you are a winner and probably the most brilliant mind that has ever existed. Um, I'm actually going to split this into two because I, uh, I, I've seen both types of people, and although I'm clumping them together, I'm going to go ahead and split them out a little bit. So I'm going to say on the mild end of this uh, is evidence if you are only willing to play with top tier lists, like you can't fathom why you would why you would take out a more competitive choice for a less competitive choice. Uh, and I would I would say with that, like if you build if you have an army and you build one list and you really can't substitute the list because you don't buy anything else for it. And I don't mean when you first start an army. I mean, you know, if you, you've owned an army for years, or, and at any given time, you're playing one list with it. Um, if, you, uh, if, they, if you play in a tactically engaging game and lose it and find that you did not enjoy the game because you lost, uh, or if, in, in general, if you're a sore loser, I would say you're you're bordering on this area that there's there's some kind of sense of identity or self-esteem that's wrapped up into your Warhammer prowess, um, and you fit the mild category of this need to prove a reason. On the more extreme side of this, I would say when you play a game, if you try to squeeze every little advantage um, beyond the rules. Uh, even if it isn't technically cheating, but you're just trying to get every little advantage. If you find yourself bullying your opponent to win, or if you're in general just a bad sport or you cheat, then yeah, you're. It seems like there's you're playing this game because you're out to prove something, um, supposedly to the world. But let's be honest, you're trying to prove it to yourself. So I took those criteria and assessed myself with it just to kind of see how it played out. And this, you know, it's a personal assessment that just, it certainly doesn't. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's accurate. Uh, but but based on the questions that I asked, I evaluated how I think I was in 2006, which is when I consider when I kind of started the game and how it is now. And it, it came up kind of like the numbers you see here. So really, obviously, I'm saying nobody, you know, I don't think people are drawn to this hobby for one reason. I think there are uh, a variety of reasons. So for me, it made sense to maybe try to split it up, take 100% and divide it, like, you know, which of these aspects, which of these reasons um, draw you to the hobby. And I, I found it interesting that uh, how much how much my reasons for playing have evolved. Now, this, this chart is inaccurate in, in certainly one way, because it, it, it kind of presumes, you know, this 100% enjoyment, you know, these are the reasons why I play. I would say that I enjoy the hobby much more now than I did in 2006. And so, whereas, you know, um, relationships, I say it's only 10% of the reason I play. Well, I enjoy my relationships immensely with it. There's in, in 2006, it wasn't like I didn't like people. I'm just saying it wasn't a reason why I played the hobby. And now, one reason I play the hobby is because I have relationships with people in the hobby, and that draws me back to it. Um, you know, but anyway, I, certainly, I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not trying to peg people saying they are one way. Uh, I'm, I'm showing here that uh, this is how I perceive myself, and um, you know, and I see that it evolves over time. And you notice I gave myself five percent on prove. Um, you know, when I ask the questions, I like to think I'm not that way. I don't think, but I don't think anybody really does. So always, there's always a lingering doubt in my mind if I'm that way. And uh, certainly there are times when I'm a sore loser 
and uh, feel the real need to win, especially if I'm on a losing streak. So uh, I gave myself 5% on both. So based on based on the reasons why people play and, and understanding that there's a variety of reasons people play, I created kind of a taxonomy. Um, I think there's nothing sacred about these names that I came up with or that there are seven types of players. I'm not necessarily saying that. But I say if, if you... I tend to think that people who play probably the reasons are fairly close to each other. Like if they're big into immersion aspects of it, they're probably not also big into needing to prove themselves to the world. I could be wrong in that assumption, but I tend to think so. So I think people that, that play it mainly for immersion aspects are probably those players that are closer to the role-playing uh, genesis of this game. I mean, that's even if I think most people that play the game now aren't necessarily role players, but uh, you should at least be aware that games, you know, this fantasy, Warhammer Fantasy has its roots in, in role playing. And um, really, it was just a way of turning that role play into a game. Uh, if you're really big into the relationships and showcasing, you're probably a hobbyist. If you are really into showcasing, um, and that's real important to you, and you're so modeling and painting, then I might split off and say you might be an aesthetic. And even though I know that's not technically a correct term, it's close enough. Uh, I call a purist those people that 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 tend to be where they like to paint and model and have a good-looking army, but they also love the strategy of it. Uh, they they tend to think the game should should be played that way. Uh, I think purist is an appropriate term there. Uh, competitors are again the tournament player people. And then at the at the end, remember how I split the uh, needing to prove to the world thing? Uh, I split them in two, so I gave them two different uh, bubbles here. The, the the on the mild end, I say they just have a fragile identity, <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the, on, the, on the extreme end, microphallus just means you have a really small penis and you're trying to make up for it. So I really think that most people that I've seen play it fall into these three groupings: hobbyists, purists, and competitors. Uh, the others exist. I don't think they're all that common. Um, so my thoughts on it. I don't think there's one way to play Warhammer. I think uh, in, if you fall into any of these camps, I think what you might find, if, just if you look around at the people you most commonly play with or the people that you feel most comfortable playing with, I think you might find that, that uh, you and they fall into to one, of these, one of these clumps. And I think that's totally okay. Uh, just by observation, here's here's what I think some of the dangers are with each of them. I think when I've seen hobbyists, the the one danger I see there is if they really don't care about the game. I've seen people that are fantastic painters. They only play with their little circle of friends who are also fantastic players, and they really don't want to play anybody else. Everybody else is a jerk. Uh, they take the game too seriously, or whatever. And that. I think I don't think it's a danger to their enjoyment of the game. I think it's a danger to the overall community because it, it keeps them away from everybody else. The other danger is when they do play other people, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times they tend to be the whipping boys, meaning when they play people that are not in that group, they lose because they're only used to playing a small group of people with very soft, very fluffy lists. Uh, then there are the purists, and uh, this is probably where I, I would say I am. Uh, and I think the danger there is... Uh, these gaming groups tend to, to have a, some kind of righteous indignation. Again, they have an idea of how the game's supposed to be played. It's supposed to be well painted. It's supposed to be a balanced list. It's supposed to to not necessarily be an optimized list. Um, I'm not advocating that as the way I really truly think that's the right way of seeing it, but I am admitting that that's probably the camp I'm in. And you you might have that impression just by watching my battle reports. And then the competitors. I think the danger there is, one, I think if if you and the crowd you play with are only playing the most optimized list out there because because you take tournaments that seriously, you're always wanting to, to, to do well in tournaments, and to do that you almost have to, to uh, play optimized lists, then you're going to tend to, to lack variety in the list that you play. Uh, you're gonna only going to play against any given army. There's going to be one or two builds, and that's what you're going to see time after time because that's what you and your, and your gamers gaming friends are playing with. And uh, I would also say you might end up seeing a lack of writing in opponents because there might be very few hobbyists and somewhat fewer purists that want to play you because you're probably going to win most of the time because you're bringing an optimized list and you're just used to playing at a higher level. Um, 
and then you have somebody who's a purist who comes to the table with a less optimized list and uh, some people can handle uh, losing uh, more often than not and some people can't so um, like I said I'm not really trying to say that one's better than the other I'm saying this is what I see and I see um, people in, in gaming groups kind of um, self-forming and so you'll have a, a purist group of people and then a more competitive group of people and over time if you just observe it you'll see they kind of uh, sometimes will talk bad about the other not necessarily but but sometimes again with the righteous indignation saying oh those people only bring optimized lists or whatever or competitors looking down saying oh those people just they're nice guys but they really don't know how to play and uh, I think that that's going to be natural but anyway but that's that's my uh, my impression of a taxonomy of players and the different kind of gaming groups that you have and if you haven't really thought about it and especially if you don't mix with a wide variety of gamers I challenge you to maybe look at your at your own gaming group and ask yourself you know which kind of group are we and uh, does the way I describe it and the dangers that I list does that seem right based on your experience so uh, that's it that's a glimpse into once bitten's mind in terms of uh, how I perceive uh, gamers and gaming groups based on uh, my moving around the country a little bit.